Yo, YouTube. So today I got a question that was emailed to me from a 24 year old man who has everything in life. He's got a great job. He's got a great wife, but he still feels stuck. He says that he's got everything to make great things happen, but he just doesn't have the motivation to make it happen. He just doesn't have that passion that was once there. So I figured today would be a great opportunity to sort of do a review and slight deep dive into the concept of the cosmic clock, something I have been mentioning briefly over many years and never really done a deep dive video. But if you're interested in really diving deep into this concept, I do teach it in my Grounding Man course, which is a part of my King for Life program. You could click the link down below to learn more about that. So here's what you ought to know. The concept is pretty simple and it's almost like a no brainer. Everything in life has cycles. Uh, I'm standing in front of a window where the sun is above my head right now. Well, 12 hours ago, it was somewhere else. <laughs> it was making its way around or I, we were making our way around it. The bottom line is the earth is doing this. And so the seasons are doing this. And if you look at a clock, it's doing this. In fact, if you look at our DNA, it's in spirals. It seems as if almost everything in life follows this sort of Fibonacci sequence of cycles, right? It's built into the mathematics of life. So it doesn't take much to prove that point. We're constantly doing this. And if you understand what new physics teaches is that time doesn't even actually exist. It's just our sort of paying attention to these cycles that are happening. Well, the same way that these cycles unfold in nature, and in uh, a myriad of different ways, and like I said, your, your DNA, it's got these spirals. It happens in your life as well. Your life, our life, our lives follow predictable patterns. And those patterns are based off of the number 12. Uh, we got 12 months, a year, we got 12 year or 12 uh, hours a day. Um, there are also, that number 12 is depicted elsewhere, Jesus and his 12 disciples, for example, and I'm, I'm sure that it can go on and on. So what I'm about to share with you is a way to understand what season you're in, because based on the season, you're going to have a type of energy. You're going to have a type of uh, experience that's going to dictate how you respond to your environment. Like, so for example, I'm not going to try to pick fruit and, and harvest during the winter, right? Winter, everything's dead. Everything's silent. Everything's still, everything's cold. If I run outside and I'm like, where's my oranges on my orange tree, right? In the middle of the winter, or where is, why am I not getting the heat that I want right now? It's in February and I'm very frustrated and depressed because it's cold. Well, I'd be a dummy because I haven't been paying attention to the cycles. Well, for the most part, when we're stuck in life, it has something to do with where we are on a cycle. And if we don't know what season it is, we don't know where we are on the cycle, it's like trying to travel without a map. It's like trying to tell the time without a clock. It's like trying to harvest when it's time to sow. It's trying to sow when it's time to reap. You see what I'm saying? So one of my teachers, in fact, the woman that taught me, taught me this, when I was in a tough place in my life, I happen to be where you are, but just 12 years later, and my life sucked just like your does right now, even though I was at the top of my game, I was most popular around that time of my life, I reached a million subscribers, and I didn't know my ass from my elbow. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, that's when I went seeking and searching and finding this initiation path, is what should we call it. Anyway, what the hell did she tell me that I wanted to tell you? Oh, she gave me an example of how silly it is that we go about our lives trying to navigate it without this map. She says it's like trying to take a boat out when the tide is not in. Think about like when the tide comes, right? We know that there are those cycles that are associated with the tide, right? And we know it's tied to the moon, right? We are affected by the celestial bodies. There's no question about it, right? Just, we, we behave differently based on the positions of the moon. That's why the word lunatic comes from the word lunar, because there's some sort of lunar pattern, I don't totally understand it, that's associated with when people go loony. They go loony, loony tunes, because of what the lunar cycle dictates. 
uh, this is most evident in a woman. A, a woman, her natural cycles are based off of what's happening with the moon. Interestingly, and I know I'm going off on a tangent here, our cycles, our hormonal cycles are based on the sun. And I think that's why men are referred to as the sons of God. Not that women are children of God, but we operate, we, our timing is based more on what's happening in the sun on a daily basis, where a woman's is based on a monthly basis. If you notice that a woman, her hormones fluctuate on a 28 day cycle or period. For a man, it fluctuates on a 24 hour cycle. In the morning, we're anabolic or catabolic, but testosterone is higher. Testosterone is high in the morning. By evening time, it starts to drop. Right? That's just one of the cycles that's recognized in a healthy male. Um, you know, adrenaline and cortisol is, is popping when the sun comes up. And then when the sun goes down, we have more of our rest and digest hormones, growth hormone and stuff like that. So we're tied to, we're not separate from nature. I don't care how you look at it from a religious perspective or a scientific perspective. We are one with our world. We are one with nature. We're one with God. Uh, and so to try to separate what's happening out there from what's happening in here is pretty darn silly. Right? What's what, as above, so below. What's happening in here is what's happening out there, and so on and so forth. It's all based on, or how we navigate our life is based on perspective. And perspective is a, fun, is a byproduct of education. The problem is, most people don't know about this. It's sort of a, once again, I guess I just love pseudoscience. It's sort of a pseudoscience. It's sort of a, it's a way of recognizing patterns in life. Once again, just like character structure. I did a whole series on that couple weeks ago, character structure isn't true. There are patterns that we can recognize. And as human beings, our great gift is pattern recognition. And so this here, what I'm teaching you right now is not true. In fact, the woman that taught it to me, and this is when I was big into my new age phase, she was a former astrologer, but she doesn't even use that term anymore. She says that she does, she is a practitioner of cosmic path initiation because she says that astrology isn't true. You know, this is a woman dedicated her life to it. She says it's not true and you can't believe it because it's just a pattern. And that's why I feel safe sharing this with you because I'm telling you, don't believe this, right? And as a Christian, there are a lot of those who say, stay away from this completely. And I understand why, because you can be fooled into believing that this is true. No pattern is the actual matter. Does that make sense? The blueprint isn't the building. <laughs> Once again, so what I'm sharing with you is a blueprint that's going to give you an idea of what the building looks like and where, what you're working on next, where you're at next. Cool caveat, let's, let's dive in. So just like there are four seasons a year, it seems that this spiral that, we, uh, that we're living on, the spiral that manifests itself even in our biology, right? I think there are four nucleo nucleotides, right? I think there are four neurotransmitters, right? Four is a division of 12. And so if 12 is the whole, we have, we portion it out into quadrants. And so you know that like right now it's winter. That's a quadrant associated with what? Four seasons in an annual cycle. Same thing with the day, right? You got midnight to morning, morning to afternoon, afternoon to evening, evening to night. So on and so forth, right? You got this cycle, you got that going on. That rhythm, that cycle manifests itself in your annual, well, your daily, your weekly, your, you know, it's happening all the time. But we can, because we live in a fractal universe, you can, the, the, the small is, a, is, is evident of the big, and the big is evident of the small, right? That's what a, frac, that's what a fractal is, a fractal is, like, so for example, a drop of water contains the whole ocean because it's a, it's a fractal of the ocean. So whatever's in that drop of water from the ocean, well, that's, what, that's the ocean. It's the whole ocean is in the drop, right? So down to the smallest bits of matter that make us who we are, it's patterned after the grand pattern, ran over. So we have those same four quadrants happening every year, but, but most importantly, because I think it becomes most potent and poignant in our lives when we draw back and we look at the 12 year cycle. And so that's a term that I've been using to sort of, I don't know, mask this idea because I wasn't ready to teach it and I'm still not 100% ready to teach it online or on YouTube. But like I said, I have a course 
called Grounding Man, when I had a bunch of men come together at one of my grounding camp events, we spoke about the cosmic clock because I wanted men to know this pattern exists so that they can dive deeper into it. By the way, this is a very fringe idea. You're not gonna learn much about it from anyone or anywhere else, but just a handful of people. I just, that's, I'm attracted to those kinds of weird things. So, take this with a grain of salt, but also, allow it to penetrate and help you. Now, if we got four, if we got a 12 year cycle going on and we break it up into quadrants, we're talking about three year quadrants, three, six, nine, 12. And at 12 is when, the, or at birth, really, is when this first cycle kicks off. So from birth to age 12, you made yourself, you, you, you went around a full cycle, right? And I know that there are people that say that there are cycles of seven. I'm pretty sure that I'm sure that's true too. But we're looking at this model. It's, it doesn't negate any other models. This model, though, makes way more sense to me that that it's 12 because if you just look out in the world, we're getting 12 all the time. So from 12 to 24, you're coming back to the clock, top of the clock, and what you have to understand is that every time you come back to the top of the clock, you're going through a new Phase. You're going through a new season in life. So me, for example, I'm 40, I'm going to be 45. So I'm finishing a cycle. I'm over here. By April, I'm going to be here. And my life is very different now than it was when I was 36. In fact, 36 to 39 was a very difficult time for me. I was initiated into a cycle that was a healing cycle. I had to go back and, you know, this is my karma. This is my path. Or things I needed to confront and deal with so that I can, like, now come back as a brand new, completely physically reoriented brand new person. This is sort of when the rebirth, a full rebirth happens. But then, like, what happens when there is a, a birth? There's a death. There's, there's just like, this cycle of life, right? One door closes, one door opens. So I'm over here. You're over here. In three years, I'm going to be over here, but I'm going to be in a brand new over here because I'll be 48 instead of 36. You're 24. Simple math. You get it. Cool. And so let me relate broadly and I'll maybe add some anecdotes in my own experiences that are associated with going through each one of these seasons, seasons, these quadrants. And I'll also break down just within the, we call this the spirit quadrant. Within this quadrant, each one of the years has a theme that's associated with it. And I, I don't know how, I don't totally understand. Like I said, it's a pseudoscience. This has been the most accurate map for living my life that I've ever experienced. This doesn't negate the Bible. This doesn't refute science. It's not competing with anything. It's just a novel but useful idea that hopefully some of you find interesting. Like I said, if you find it interesting, we can go deep. I might even, I might even create a full-blown course about this. Of course, it'll be for my King for Life members. So, you know, that might be something that you can look forward to if you decide to join us. So, age 24. When you are in winter, think about what happens in the winter time. Everything goes underground. Winter time is when everything subsides. You look out and it seems desolate. There is no more leaves on the tree. It's cold. It's sterile. Although deep underneath, something is still stirring. The, there, there is a nourishing and a sort of revitalizing that's happening deep within the soil. In fact, if there is no winter, certain things, certain plants, certain uh, growth that happens in the spring, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't happen the way it does because the, it, it, you needed to give the soil a rest. The soil needs an opportunity to sort of uh, introspect, right? And now I'm starting to use you as a, as a part of the analogy. What happens in the winter? Introspection. You go in. Nature subs, subs, uh, sinks in. Nature sinks. I forget the word I'm trying to think of, but it's, it's, it, it sinks. It retreats, it retreats. And the same thing is happening to you in your life. In many ways, very different, various different aspects of who you thought you were when you were coming to the, 
to the end of this cycle, right? So, you know, the previous three years, you were working through the completion of a cycle. And that completion of the cycle is the formation of a complete ego. Now, that ego served you. It was in formation from age 12 to age 33. Uh, well, what would that be? Nine. I got my math wrong. Did I, did I get that math wrong? Yeah, I probably did. Uh, 24, 25, 26, 7, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So 33. Yeah, I got it right. 33. But anyway, nine, and so anyway, so there was a full, you came to a full conclusion and had a fully formed ego, you could say, you know, the interface with the world associated with that cycle from 12 to 24. But when you get to the top of 24, right, and, and you know, you're harvesting. What happens during the fall? You're harvesting. You're probably benefiting from the seeds that were planted and nourished and supported prior to that point and then it's like sort of like harvest time like i said this is not an exact science but you were and i can i just point back to my life i think about my life and i'm like damn 33 33 is when i became popular on youtube it was like 2014 i think 2014 15 six yeah 13 14 15 16 and then 2016 is when i started cracking up all right and i'm super sensitive i didn't know about this until i until I started cracking up and I went looking for initiation. I, so I wanted to learn about the process of initiation and how it unfolds in the cyclical fashion in our lives, right? And I found this as a result. So you're, you're, you became a fully formed dude and then at, immediately when you start to become, you become personally identified with the job, I got my wife, I got things going on, you go into a winter time which is basically asking you now to chill. It's basically saying to you, pull back now. Everything was afforded, now you have an opportunity to chill. But if we don't recognize chill as an option, if we don't recognize animalism as a, pro, as, as, a, as, a, as a thing, if we don't understand rest and digest, if we don't understand slowing down and allowing things to grow in the unseen, Right? It's the soil is being re reformulated underneath, but you don't see it. You're looking at the tree, you don't see the, you look at the branch and you don't see the leaves, you freak out. Not recognizing, oh, everything went down underneath and there's a lot of activity, but it's unseen. And that's why the winter quadrant is also considered, it's really, it really is the spirit quadrant. We got spirit, we got mind, we got emotion, we got physical. Right? And so winter time is a time of spirit. Meaning, you, what is spirit? Spirit is, is, you can't see spirit. Spirit is not something that's tangible. Spirit is the pattern of what is going to ultimately become matter. And as I said earlier, the, the pattern of a thing isn't the matter. So you have to be, you're kind of looking at a blueprint of a house. Imagine you're building a house. Right? And you're looking at the blueprints of the house, right? Because now it's, it's winter time, right? It's like, okay, we're, the artist, the architect is going to sit down, he's going he's to create the plan. But he's got to sit there and he's got to sketch it out and he's got to create the plan. If you go tap on that architect's shoulder and you're like, hey, uh, where's the house? Why am I not enjoying my home right now? He's going to look at you sideways because he's going to be like, bro, it's still up in here. It's still in the ether. It doesn't actually exist yet. And I'm trying my best to bring it into from mind into physicality, but it's a process, a manifestation process. It's a process. So you have to be patient during this time of your life. You got to be patient between age 24 and 27. And you know what happened to me at age 27? Because I was right where you were at age 24. I, it's, I, I'm most fascinated by the fact that I get more 24-year-olds sending me questions than anything else. 24-year-olds, your life is confusing and nobody told you that it should be. It's supposed to be. At age 24, I was slightly depressed. I had our first baby. I lost a job. I moved to Florida. I didn't know what to do with my life. Age 24. By age 27, I kid you not, brother, age 27, I found strongman training. I went to a, went to a workshop, did, started strongman training, fell in love with strongman. By age 33, when it was all becoming physical, I became a popular strongman YouTube figure. I was like the only guy teaching strongman, showing people lifting stones on YouTube. So the very thing that came into my mind and manifested in spring, what is spring? Pow! It pops up. As it popped up in the spring in my life, it then went 
through the cycle, went down under and rose up as an actual thing. Wow, now I'm making money and I'm teaching people straw man on YouTube. I couldn't have predicted that. I couldn't have created that. That's all based on riding the wave. We know that like, you know, if you're, if you're a sailor, the wind does all the work, right? The, if, you're, if you're a rafter, the water does all the work. As a human being, spirit does all the work. God does all the work, right? Doesn't mean that you can get anywhere without the boat. Wind will be blowing nothing. We are, say, for example, that boat that God is blowing or the seasons are carrying, right? So that means the best way to navigate this phase in your life is with patience, is with relaxation, with appreciation. That's, that's the number one key to navigating age 24 to 27 is appreciation. Appreciation for everything that came before and appreciation for everything that's going to be revealed later. It's a good time to set intentions but not try to go get it. Does that make sense? It's a good time to think about what you're becoming because you have another 12 years now. Now that I'm older, I always think in terms of 12 year cycles or their quadrants, right? I don't think year to year. I think quadrants and I think cycles. So right now I'm working on ending this cycle and I'm thinking the next four years to get me to the top of the clock. So the best way to handle, I, you know, I'm not gonna get into it every, each quadrant here today. I'm just gonna talk about this quadrant. The best way to navigate, navigate this quadrant is with faith and appreciation. And in fact, if you see, just look at my writing there, this is associated with spirit. That quadrant is associated with spirit. And so we say that each one of these years or archetypes that you move through during these three years are associated with some divine quality. And, the, and at age 24, the quality that you're, you're being associated with or you're being initiated into is divine power. And divine power has everything to do with letting go and allowing God, trusting God. It has everything to do with divine. What is divine power? It's the power of God. It's not, your, it's not physical power. It's not emotional power. It's not mental power, right? We want to operate in the, in the, in the divine quadrant with mind energy. You don't know anything here, so you have to have faith. You have, you're forced to have faith when you're in this quadrant. Once you awaken, then now you give it, you give it, conscious, you give it conscious power, conscious love, conscious mastery, right? Because that's what we go through. We go divine love, or power, love, mastery. You get, right now, you're in divine power. And divine power is completely out of your hands. It's God power. Divine power is what? God power. How do you, how do you navigate and work with God power? Appreciation, gratitude, prayer, meditation, stilling, chilling, right? Not like when you're in the fall and you're in the physical and it's going, it's grind time, it's go time, it's grind time. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you, you, can't, you don't pray and meditate here and you don't do anything here, but you got to understand the season, right? It's, even though it's winter, I live in Florida, like there's still things that need to be done on the outside. You don't do nothing completely, but the overall the, the overall energy, the overall feel, the overall season dictates a, you know, a certain way. So right now, at age 24, until you get to age 25, it has everything to do with letting go. Pray, brother. Meditate. Have faith. And most of all, be grateful. Gratitude is like aligning you with your true path. Whenever, it's, like the, it's like gratitude is like the hack. Gratitude is the hack to align you with your true path, to align you with God. God loves to give. God loves to guide. But God also loves appreciation, right? It's, it's, just, it's just what it is. Then you're going to move from 24 to 25 into divine love. And divine love has everything to do with how God loves you. God loves you unconditionally, so we get the opportunity to learn how to love ourselves un unconditionally. Divine love is unconditional love. And that means I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I want. I'm stuck. I'm feeling crappy, but I still love myself because God loves me. It's a reminder that God the Father is in charge. He rules this, and he also loves you. 
He loves you. So that quadrant is also always associated with self-forgiveness. A lot to do with self. Self-love can't happen without self-forgiveness. And when you forgive yourself, you're forgiving yourself for thinking that I have to have it all together right now at age 24. Like, forgive yourself for even thinking that because it's ridiculous. To age 24 to age 25, as long as you're not compete, and competing and comparing yourself to other people in their path, right? Because that's what will end up happening. That's where you really get screwed up. You, me you measure yourself against other 24-year-olds that maybe have certain things that you don't. But we're all, we're all different. So he might, you know, maybe that guy, the other guy has more money than you. Well, who cares? He still doesn't have a wife. He's not loving his life the same way you are in relationships, right? Maybe he's got something that you don't have and you have something that he don't have. So don't ever compare yourself. Don't ever say, oh, but that 24-year-old has something that I don't. That can throw you off base big time. Never do that. So you got divine power, you got divine love, and you got divine mastery. And when you get to the mastery quadrant of any one of these, these quadrants, that's about being completely limitless. Like you can achieve anything. You put your anything that you put your mind to, anything that you anything that you have hope and faith for, and you stay with it and you're conscious about it, is going to become your reality. There's no there's no two ways about it. It's just the way it is. So long story short, Cosmic Clock is an opportunity for you to take a look at a map of your life that gives you a hint of where you are so that you can approach that season in your life in the most resourceful way possible. At a, at a age, at a, whenever you get to the top of the clock, age 24, 36, 48, you're going into winter. And when you're in winter, don't try to make yourself feel good. Don't try to go and get in something and grind. And don't try too hard at all. Be appreciative, be grateful, and be chilling because guaranteed, Three years later, it's like a spark. Bang, you wake up. So think about springtime. Around here in Florida, springtime, we know instantly because it's 90 degrees. It's like one day it was, it's 50 degrees, the next day it's 90 degrees. It turns on like a spark. For me, that, at age 39, at age 39 is when I created my first Grounding Man course. That's my Grounding Man uh, event. I was doing grounding camps. And this is when I this is when I turned you know uh, I don't know how people want to describe it but like they were calling me ma uh, misogynist misogynist Elliot because I woke up to true masculinity I atoned with my father during this time and so I and then I woke up and I began to realize I woke up this is what happens here you wake up I woke up to how anti masculine the world is I got red pilled you might say bang I woke up. And then I took this all the way around the clock. I could just, I mean, man, I have stories I could tell you about my experience with each quadrant and each year because I'm aware, so I'm paying attention. And I keep a journal so I know what's going on during these, these seasons. So anyway, that's it. That's all. I hope you enjoyed this, y'all. If you want more stuff like this, let me know. I might make some more videos. But if you want to dive right in, bro, just go to my King for Life website, kingforlife.net, or click the link down below. Watch my Grounding Man course. And then shoot me a DM inside our King for Life school and I'll chat with you about where you are and maybe give you some guidance on how to get to the best place possible for your season in life. That's it. That's all. Done, y'all.